We can get started, I suppose, if people come in late, they come in late. Uh, so, this is the designate project update. Uh, my name is Graham Hayes, I'm the PTL, and the, I've been the PTL now for quite an extended period of time, so I've, seen, I've been with the project as it's grown. Uh, I currently work for Verizon. I uh, help, I, I, I'm one of the leads for the team that runs our internal private cloud. So I'm, I'm assuming if you're here for the last session, you know what Designate is, but just a background in it, it's, it's Designate is about six years old now. It was started by a company in Dublin and in 2013, they brought it into the HP public cloud at the time and started running it as a production service. So in Liberty, um, we, we were added uh, before the big tent, we were brought in as a uh, integrated project. And the 12% is a longer tree actually, we are now up to 19% of production installs use designate. And in some of the largest installs of OpenStack, designates a key component. So uh, as a recap, in Queens, we got all of the goals done. We were actually ahead of the curve for the Queens goals. We'd uh, already split our Tempest test out and had the property, the, the beginning of the Python 3 work done. <coughs> for Pike, there's still an outstanding goal. Um, we don't have a WSGI app available yet. Um, that's gonna become a lot more urgent uh, as we remove Python 2 uh, because uh, the Oslo service plus uh, Python 3 on eventlet means you can't use SSL. So that is the, the, the highest, one of the highest things in our list right now is to get that fixed. Uh, we removed our legacy API, which also meant that if you had legacy heat objects that used the original uh, V1 uh, resources, you'll have to migrate them to version two. Luckily, they're all named different things, so it won't cause conflicts. And we were added to the interop guidelines, so uh, if you uh, have a, a, a public cloud or if you sell a product that has a designate in it, you can get certification from the foundation to say that you run a certified uh, interop compatible version of uh, designate. And it's an add-on, so you have the OpenStack powered, I think it's called, uh, trademark program. There's a, you can have a DNS add-on, so you can have OpenStack compute plus DNS. In Rocky, um, the last, we got all of the project goals done. Um, we, we, we did a lot of Python 3 work, uh, getting it ready. Um, as it turns out, there was we had, there was comp compatibility issues for some of our code between Python 3.5 and Python 3.7. So we started getting all that work out of the way so that when the OpenStack community as a whole drops Python 2 support, we will run across all the, all the major uh, distros and their uh, versions of Python 3. And we merge the OpenStack version objects, which is an important step towards uh, the ability to do rolling updates without taking down the API or causing interruption to uh, control, con control plane interactions. This cycle and uh, the project wide goals, uh, we've, we're, we're finished the Python one. We've been uh, co-gating on Python for a long time actually, um, for Python 3. And we have uh, the bones of the status upgrade checked on we just need to find something to check because designate being so compact as a service, there's not a huge amount that can go wrong in an update. So uh, there's not probably not going to be a huge amount of stuff in there, just small gotchas that we've noticed in the past. Um, the ability to edit the SOA record data is there's a patch up we need that is in review currently, uh, which allows you to override some of the refresh and uh, other information and the ability to set a serial 
Um, I think that's something that a lot of customers have asked for is the ability to say, start this at serial, whatever. And we had a session earlier this week about doing shared zones. So that's the etherpad where we had the discussion. Um, it's a fairly simple uh, RBAC solution. So the idea, the idea is that if you, you create cloud.com, cloud.company.com, and you want other projects to be able to update that uh, zone, you should be able to share it with that zone. You also may want to be able to say, okay, nobody can edit this zone, but I want other people to be able to create uh, products.cloud.company.com as a zone of their own. So the, uh, allowing uh, other projects create subdomains of another domain is another level of the shared zone. And it's, this has been a long outstanding uh, feature request. I would like to get it into Stein, but it's gonna be resource dependent. So if anyone has free developers, uh, when I finish writing the spec based on the etherpad, uh, please shout out. It's, it, it should be fairly simple work. It's also a really good way of getting to know how Designate's put together and uh, how, how our storage model and everything work works because you'll be touching a lot of the core business logic in Designate. And for Train and Beyond, we've had a, one of the large users of Designate uh, has signed themselves up to start working on Split Horizon. Um, we're not sure what, what form that's going to take yet, so the spec is going to go up. And anyone who has an interest in working on Split Horizon, please keep an eye out for it and uh, put in reviews and comment and put in your ideas. It's important to think about that with the Split Horizon, it, will pro it could probably form the basis for GOIP, so doing uh, DNS responses based on the uh, requester's geography. <coughs> so I don't, we don't want to re-implement the same thing twice effectively. So GOIP is effectively just a really complex split horizon. So, we, uh, so when we're reviewing the patches, that's what we need to look at. And if anyone has a particular interest in getting something like that in place, again, let us know. And we can, I'll put you in contact with the people who are writing the Split Horizon spec so you, some sort of collaboration can happen. Um, <clears throat> there's been asks for a geo-redundant control plane. Um, some, another company has decided, has signed up themselves to go come up with a plan about how we can do it. Um, the, problem, the problem is that Designate is, is a global service. We're at the same level of flight as Keystone having a designate per region doesn't necessarily make sense uh, with different zones. So the, obviously you need to have your DNS and the ability to update it, not go down when you lose a, if, if you lose a data center, you don't want to be able, not be able to update records to put traffic to another data center. That would be a bad thing. So, um, it's very welcome work, um, but it is, that's probably gonna be quite a tricky one. And finally, your idea. Um, Designate is, is a fairly simple project. We, we, the aim is to, go out, is to have an API that's standard to update and create records and zones and support as many different uh, DNS servers and providers that we, as we can. So, if you have ideas, they're great. If you have developers to implement them, that's even better. Um, but uh, all, all ideas will be put onto, a, onto, onto our roadmap and as people sign up to say, oh, I have free cycles, we can help hand out that work. Um, right now there is, so this cycle we did 90 commits the majority of which were uh, bug fixing. Um, we have three, pe three people who work on it part-time 
and uh, a few others who give time when they can. Um, so we're not floundering, we're not as bad as we were uh, a, two years ago, a year ago, when I first wrote about it, but we're, if we want to address any extra, extra features, something like DNSSEC, if that's required, will require a huge injection of people to make it work and then people to maintain it as it goes forward because we can't just drop a feature in and walk away. We need to, we will, it, it'll need updates and uh, maintenance as we go forward. So in Metaka, there was a plugin added to Neutron so that when you create a Neutron network, you can attach a DNS domain to that network. And then when you create a port or floating IP, you can attach a DNS name to it. Um, and depending on your setup, it'll either push the record out to designate straight away, or when you attach a floating IP to that port, it'll push the, it'll push the name out to designate. Uh, that is, it's in place and it works quite well, but there's, as people are using it, they're finding more and more use cases where it could be slightly expanded. So we're, we're working, getting all that information back and working with the Neutron team to make sure all the little bugs or slight modification feature requests people want are in their queue and work done. Um, there's also been a request for multiple DNS zones per network. So if you have a provider network that is your external network that you share with multiple tenants, the ability to have a a uh, DNS domain per project for that uh, network has been asked for. That is slightly more work, it's not a small feature, um, but it's something we're, I'm trying to work through and <coughs> spec out for the Neutron team. And they're fairly receptive to feature requests for this. The integration was written by the current PTL, so I, I always use that when I find a bug and need it fixed. <laughs> you wrote this, please fix it. Um, and we do have a designate sync. Um, I, every time I come to a summit, people ask me about it. So designate sync was written in, in the early days before we were an OpenStack official project. So what it does is it listens to the RabbitMQ notifications that used to be sent out for Solometer. So when you create an instance or a port or a floating IP, it would read that message off the queue and do some automated action. I, we do highly recommend you move to the Neutron integration. I do know there's a lot of people who have, there's a couple of large people, large customers who've written very complex uh, plugins for sync. So it's not gonna go away, but the documentation isn't gonna get any better. And we are pushing, asking people to move towards the more stable integration that uses the API. So if you have feedback or suggestions or you're interested in getting involved, uh, OpenStack DNS, um, I live in Ireland but work Eastern US hours, so there's a high probability I'll be online at any point in the day. Um, designate tag on OpenStack Dev or from Monday, OpenStack Discuss when they merge the lists. Uh, I've, I've filters on the designate keyword in the subject, so it will, it'll bypass, it'll go straight into my inbox. Or just email me directly. Directly, I will, I will get back to you as soon as I can. And every two weeks, so this is complex, every, every two weeks we have a meeting and it alternates between a morning UTC time and an evening UTC time every two weeks. So on the uh, eavesdrop.openstack.org webpage, there's a link to the, uh, an ICS file and it will show the right times for the meeting in your calendar uh, if you're interested in joining. Uh, but you don't feel like you have to wait for a meeting to talk to people in IRC, uh, all the contributors are, we, we also, we're on IRC most of the time and even if we don't answer you straight away, we might, we'll probably answer you an hour or two later. 
Uh, so don't be disheartened if you don't get an immediate response, but we are there. Bugs, we have a collection of relatively uh, good starter bug fixes that are on Launchpad with the low-hanging fruit tag. Uh, if, you, if you feel like you want to do anything, just pick one of those up and start working on it, and we'll review the code as you put it up. If you have any questions, again, the IRC or the meeting or email will help you out. Um, probably the easiest, the best thing is docs. It's, it's always a barrier to ent entry for people. So especially if our docs are wrong, there, we've noticed a couple, a couple of places that things have changed and that a doc isn't necessarily correct anymore. Please either file a bug or even better, put up a patch to fix it. Um, but if you can see, also if you see areas that are, could be improved to make it easier for people, uh, just let us know. And finally, uh, that link there is the review dashboard. So, At the top, there's an urgent fix and priority fixes. If you feel like doing reviews, they are the places to start. Um, and then after that, just start work. If you want to, if you want to review anything, just look at the Pasul needs review. These are the changes that we're looking for reviews for. Um, I've been asked, I know for a, lot of, for a lot of people getting the company to agree to contribute requires uh, a path to core or the ability to be a project leader. Um, we're fairly open to people becoming core. There's no ceremony about it. As long as I can see people are doing consistently good reviews and they're, they're doing a sustained reviews, they're not doing say five one day, then nothing for a month and then another five. If you're doing every week, every week, an hour, say, just reviewing what's there, it's a very quick way for us to promote you into core. Um, I, I would, I, I, I would rather go with the trust model, that I trust you to ask questions if you don't, even if you're a core reviewer and you don't know what to, if you don't know to approve it or not to ask questions. So we don't have huge gatekeeping problems. We let people in. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. Is there any questions for anyone? Does everyone just want to go get beer, seeing we're in Berlin? <laughs> Okay, thank you very much.